What's up, everybody? This is Justin Flinter coming to you live from Northern Virginia with the Justin Flinter Podcast by My Mentor Medicine. This week's podcast, we're going to talk about coffee time versus growth time. I'm going to start off this conversation a little bit by talking about one of my biggest pet peeves. And that big pet peeve is, I'm sure you might have experienced it yourself, but I know I have many times. You're walking down the hallway or maybe you're walking down the street and you run into somebody that you haven't seen for maybe a few weeks or a month or maybe even a year. It's been a long time, it feels like. You have a nice little conversation and then uh, you both are about to part ways. And the last thing that one of you says is, hey, we should have coffee sometime and and catch up. Uh, We didn't really have much to talk about now or we didn't have enough time to share what we wanted to. So let's meet up and have coffee. Maybe a week rolls by, two weeks, turns into a month, maybe even two months or three months. You run into that person again and then all of a sudden, hey, we didn't get to have that coffee. We should schedule that. Are you free this week? Okay, my question is, if that other person, in this case, if, if it wasn't me that initiated contact, because I know I would have tried to schedule something the first time I said it, but if the other person reaches out and says, hey, we should have coffee sometime. Okay, when? That's my question. Why did it take three months to get to the point where you're finally going to figure out when you want to have coffee or tell me when it is that you are free to have that coffee? or make the time to actually meet with me? Is there even really interest to meet with the other party? I don't know. If I initiate contact and say, hey, I wanna have coffee with you sometime, of course, I'm saying it because I'm interested. I really do wanna catch up with you. I really do want to talk about whatever it is that we said we would talk about over coffee. So let's schedule that now so it's both in our calendars, both in our brains, so that we're ready to meet. But if you extend the invitation, but you don't follow through and actually try to schedule something, then what's the freaking point? You're wasting your breath. And in essence, you're actually wasting time. So this biggest pet peeve of mine actually comes back to the topic of coffee time versus growth time. I mean, leave the pet peeve part out of it. But when you think about how much time every week people spend having coffee with another person or maybe even a group of people. Think about it for yourself. How many times a week do you actually meet to have coffee? Or maybe you don't drink coffee. Maybe you drink tea or some other drink. How many times do you get together to have those drinks, coffee or tea, and have conversations about whatever it is you have a conversation about? It might be venting about work. It might be talking about a project. It might be be something else. Now take all of those times that you meet per week, add them up, and then add them up for the week, add them up for the month, and then see how many, t- how much time you spend each year on average having coffee with individuals. So you have three times a week, about 30 minutes each time. It's about an hour and a half a week, which adds up to something about close to, depending on the the length of the month, around maybe six hours a month and even close to about 80 hours a year, somewhere in there. Now, take it a step further. I mean, if you're actually purchasing coffee, say you buy coffee that's around $4, which is probably the average cost of a coffee nowadays, $4 coffee, Three times a week, about $12 a week. That's somewhere around $625 a year. That's quite a bit of money just for coffee. That's quite a bit of time just for coffee. Now, I want you to imagine if you took that time, even if it's just half, but for the sake of this exercise, I just want you to think if you took all of that time and devoted it to just time for you. That's why I said growth time, coffee time versus growth time. If you took that time and invested it in yourself, you knew exactly by counting how many times a week you met with someone for coffee, you took that time and you turned it into time just for your own personal growth. 
I'm sure there are some things in your life that you wish you could change. You could, you wish you could turn around or have a little bit more time doing or spending spending time on. Uh, there's probably projects at home. There's probably projects uh, that you are passionate about that you don't really have as much time to devote to because of other things. Here is one place that you can scratch some of that time that you spend having coffee and replace it with time for you. You can reown this time because you are, in fact, in control of how you spend your time. Now, I'm not saying you have to quit having coffee with every other individual. That's not what I'm saying at all. I am simply pointing out the fact that if you take a look at exactly how much time you spend having coffee with other people, but yet there is some point in your life that you are unsatisfied with or perhaps even complaining about, here is your chance to stop complaining. Here is your chance to actually do something about it. Just today, when I was writing down some ideas for uh, what I wanted to add into this podcast, I was eating lunch. I was watching around the room, just trying to brainstorm a little bit, see what would come up. And then as I'm watching around the room, just sort of glanced around at a couple people, I noticed a woman over there in the corner who had just finished her lunch, and she's sitting there staring at her phone. And I looked a little bit closer, and I saw that she's actually watching a show, watching television. I mean, if you have enough time during lunch to sit there and watch, whether it's Netflix or Amazon or whatever video that you have playing on your phone from YouTube or something, if you have the time to do that at lunch, but yet you also have time to go around and complain about your life or complain about what other people are doing and you are not able to do, granted, I don't know if that's what this woman would do outside of watching after her lunchtime. I don't know. Maybe she's completely satisfied with her life. I have no clue. But the point is, if you have time to do those things and yet you are still able to walk around and talk to other people about something that you are not happy with in your life, then I don't think you have any excuses to put in front of why you have the right to complain. Use your time wisely. Use your time for you first before anything or anyone else. Of course, if you have a family, you have to make sure that you make time for them. That is a priority. Absolutely. You have a relationship. You need to make time for that. Above all, though, if you do not take care of yourself and how you grow throughout your life, physically, mentally, and spiritually, how do you expect to care or help or provide advice for other people, whether they're family or not? Social interaction is definitely important. We all need to have it as part of our life, and that can be done over coffee. That is perfectly fine. What I am inviting you to look into, though, in this podcast is... If there's a part of your life that you know you need to work on and you also know that you don't have enough time or you're telling yourself that you don't have enough time, then what you need to do is search for that time. Because I guarantee you, although there are only 24 hours in a day, you can find the time in a single day. You don't have to scrounge around for that time and wait until a project is over, or wait until the fiscal year is over, or wait until the next semester at school is over. You don't have to wait for these things. You can do them right now. Wisely use your time. Coffee time is still time. It is your time. And I should not have to remind you that your time is limited while you are here on this planet. You only live once. You only get this moment right here, right now, listening to me once. You can listen to this podcast over and over and over, but I hope 
that you will only have to listen to this podcast one time. After you have finished listening, you will turn off your device and you will make the decision to make use of your time for you first. So what are a few things that you can do when you actually do make that choice? The choice to have your own growth time versus coffee time. Here's an idea to start with. You go week by week. I'm going to give you three ideas to start you off for the first three weeks. Week one, you write, you write, and you write again. You write down the things you're satisfied with. You write down the things that you are not satisfied with in your life. You write down the things that you know that you need to change and that you want to change. You completely analyze your life as it is right now. Get as much information on paper, in your mind, and out of your mind, and onto that paper, as much of it as possible. You write, you write, you write, you write, you write. Week two, you read through what it is that you wrote down, and you prioritize the things that you know are the most important that you should take care of now, or the things that you can wait until later to work on. You actually map them out. And one of the best practices that I have come across to this day is actually mind mapping. You come up with one idea, and then from that one single idea, or perhaps that one goal, which is how I use it, you take one goal, stem off from that one goal, and figure out what are the elements of that goal that you know that are important. And then from those specific elements, you stem off from there some other ideas, the things that you know you can work on. And then from there on out, you can design how much time it takes when you need to organize or when you need to work on them specifically during this entire process so that you ultimately reach your goal. So week two, you prioritize things, you map them out. So week three, here is the most important part. This is where you take action. This is where you start tackling things one by one and you use a structured approach. After you have already mapped things out, you structure them based off of how you're going to achieve them. When do you want to achieve them by? How much time do you need? What are the elements that you need to measure along the way to ensure that you're reaching the goals? The old acronym, and it's still used to this day. Why? Because it works, is SMART goals. They're specific, they're measurable. There is achievable, they're reasonable, and they are time-oriented. SMART, S-M-A-R-T. Specific, measurable, achievable, or attainable. Reasonable and time-sensitive. If you can complete just these first three weeks, you will have a head start so far in front of other people that are still sitting around drinking coffee with each other. They will have no idea because you will be a blur. You will be gone. Why? Because you have devoted your time for you. You have not forgotten about them. You have not pushed them off. You have not said that I am more valuable than you. You are simply allowing yourself to recognize the fact that you are the most important person in your life. Personal time, growth time is way more valuable than coffee time. I'm a coffee lover. I love to have coffee breaks. I love to enjoy coffee with other people. It's one of my uh, favorite things to do on the side. But even when I'm having coffee, I love to have conversations about things that I know that the other person is interested in, but also I know that I can benefit from as well. I'm not trying to work the tables here. I'm not trying to uh, only search search for the things that I love to learn about or to know about. But by talking to other people and listening to their conversations, I actually am learning something about myself, whether they know it or not. So I'm constantly, constantly trying to learn something new. I am constantly writing down ideas instead of sitting there after eating my lunch and watching Netflix on my phone. To me, this blows me away why it is that people want to sit around 
when they have spare time to just blow away the time. Something is missing in those individuals' lives that is keeping them from feeling fulfilled, from feeling satisfied. And this right here, this podcast is their gateway, is your gateway to start opening up possibilities in your life by first focusing on you. So put the coffee down, pick up a pencil, get some paper, and start writing. Write down the things that you're not satisfied with. Write down the things you are super satisfied with. Write down the things that you love to do earlier on in life that you know you would love to start doing again. Figure out how you can add those back into your life on a whole new level. You are not who you were 20 years ago. You were not who you were five minutes ago. You are a different person now than you were. So don't try to be that person in the past. Try to be the person you are now and aim for the person you can be in the future. Start developing a new thought process, a new way of approaching life on a day-to-day basis, a minute-to-minute basis. Develop yourself every chance you get. Your personal time is way more valuable than coffee time. I can't say it enough. Your personal time is so much more valuable than a $4 cup of coffee. That money that you spend on all of those coffees, what did I say? Something about $625 or $650 a year if you're meeting, what, three times a week for about $4 a cup of coffee. That's a ton of money that you could put towards whatever it is you are aiming to achieve in your life. Say you have a goal of starting a business or uh, say you have a goal of achieving a new certification or you want to buy a certain product that you know could help you to keep moving forward in your goals. Maybe it's a piece of exercise equipment. Put that money aside each week. Put that $12 a week aside into one single account that you know is devoted to your own personal goal. It's your personal fund. It's your, uh, I've heard somebody say before, it's their freedom fund. Whatever it is for you, that money can be used for you. So growth time, growth, uh, personal time, personal money, all of those things, devote them to you. Your time is your money. That's what people say. Time is money, right? But your time is way more valuable than your coffee time. And the amount of money that you spend on your coffee can be used towards helping you grow further in your own life. So again, I urge you, as soon as this podcast is over, which is going to be very, very quickly, you put down that coffee, you pick up that pencil, and you grab that paper, and you start writing. Week one starts the moment this podcast is over. You write, you write, you write, you write, and you write. And then when you're done writing, you analyze everything that you've written down. And then you map things out. You prioritize them. And then the next week, you get to it. Or even sooner, if you're really ambitious, if you really want to get down to it and start right away, and you know you want to make that change starting now, I applaud you. Because you've made the choice that many people cannot make. And I know that all of you out there listening right now, if you've reached this point of this podcast, that you are devoted, just as devoted as I am. And I am a super devoted person when it comes to how I value my time. That's why I'm sitting here right now after midnight on June 5th to record this podcast for all of you, because I truly believe that my time can be can be devoted for great things that I know I can pass on to all of you. So, this is your chance. Use your time wisely, starting now. I guarantee you, from this point forward, you won't look at coffee breaks the same way you used to. You're going to start thinking, oh, I remember Justin saying that. I could be using this time for myself. I could be putting this money away into a little account. This this is my time. I need to value this more. This is for me. I'm only here once. I only get one life. How am I going to do this? 
What am I going to do next? We all have the power to make this decision. All of us. So I leave you with one final thought. You can either waste your time or you can master your time. That choice, I know you'll make the right one. That's it for this week's podcast. I thank you for listening. I'm Justin Flinner, and this is the Justin Flinner Podcast brought to you by My Mitchell Medicine. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great week. Use your time wisely. I know you will. The Justin Flinner Podcast is brought to you by My Mentor Medicine, an organization dedicated to helping people improve their lives by learning to empower themselves and take control of their own life. Any form of reproduction or distribution of this podcast or the information contained in this podcast is strictly prohibited. Should you have any questions on how to use this podcast or the information contained within this podcast, please contact My Mentor Medicine at info at mymentormedicine.com dot com.